So the next steps. When is this actually going to happen? When are we going to see the Hyperloop? Well, we're starting construction next year, as you heard earlier, in Quay Valley. So Quay Valley is right next to the I-5 in Kings County, which is like an hour north of Bakersfield, an hour south of Fresno. So if you drive down the I-5 freeway to Los Angeles um, next year, you'll see our construction on the side. It's going to be a straight line around um, five miles long, right next to the freeway. So we choose this. Why, why did we choose this? We actually had several opportunities. We had several um, areas where we could have built the first one. But we want to go at the end from LA to San Francisco, right, one day. So um, this is an historical place for us. So being able to really be there right in the middle, that's why we choose it. Plus, obviously, we can be there within two and a half hours from LA, which really helps. In terms of next steps, we're now basically closing a fundraising round with strategic partners and venture capital firms. So money, as stupid as it sounds, is really not a big issue here. As you can imagine, like Quay Valley is going to cost us $150 million. We have 20, around 20 city pairs right now that would like to have a first full-scale Hyperloop. And they will be paying for it. So uh, some of them are in the US, some of them are in Europe, others are in Asia, the Middle East, uh, Africa. Um, it's, it's, it's like you're there when the railroad starts, right? So 150 million, if you guys read TechCrunch, is literally nothing. We have several partners that would like to fund us already three, four times. But um, for us, the most important part is to create value for our team members and be able to get the best partners in. People that actually, you know, how they always say, smart money. So we want people that, I mean, venture capital firms have to have a certain background, right? If it's something that we don't have, when we talk about, for example, they have connections in big data, because big data is obviously a big, a big thing here. Um, other strategic partners might have experience with moving a lot of people. Right, so operational companies, or they are very well tied in with the governments in in certain countries. So that's really what we're looking for. Then we we're planning on doing a public offering, and the reason for the public offering is not like oh you know it's a, it's an IPO everything it's an exit. It's really that this is a new kind of company. It's a company that's built on the community. So when we started out. Um, nobody thought this was possible. It was just a handful of people, a community that came together and said, no, it's doable. I, I, make, I made the math. It's not a problem. And they started building this. And while we are moving forward more and more, obviously more and more people are jumping on. But um, it's really, if it's there where it is today, it's thanks to the community. Unfortunately, due to the laws that we have in the US, it's not possible for us to just say, hey, why didn't you guys put in your 20 bucks, right? So we need to do a public offering. We need to do a filing in order to allow them to allow anybody to, you know, be part of this. If not, it's just going to be these strategic partners, these venture capital firms that buy in now and are going to have a big exit. Just to give you guys an example, you were probably not there, but uh, I was there when Facebook came out, right? So and I was one of the first probably in the communities right after they came out of the, of the universities. If I would have invested $20 during their Series A, those $20 right now would be worth more than 600000 That's At the end, you know, it's a community, it's a user base that makes the products great, right? So what we really want is that they have a possibility to be part of that. So then we start construction in the second quarter 2016. Elon has committed to build a test track, a one mile small scale test track that's going to be used for open source student competitions, um, which is great. It's basically down our alley. I think there's a lot of technologies that might come out that we can be using, especially in communications. We're 
then going to be doing the testing and optimizing Quay in 2017. In 2018, 2019, you're all invited to come by at the opening. So the lessons learned, I would say, from all this are, well, first of all, build a movement, because that's what we're doing. And it works great. Anybody who talks about this project, um, when you talk about it, doing it in the US, it would take 20, 30 years. So obviously, and that's what people tell us. And you know what I answer them? We don't have to build it in the US. We will now because we're on private property, but the next step for us is very likely Asia, Middle East, where there's 50 million people living in a city and they need to get to be, to be moved. Africa, where they have huge infrastructure problems. They need to invest in infrastructure. And remember, infrastructure is an ongoing cost. It's a liability. So if you can offer them something that actually makes money, and we are profitable after eight years on LA to San Francisco with a lower ticket price, they're all over it. Because it's not the amount of money. It's not if you spend 16, 40, or $50 billion. It's how fast do I get it back, and is it continuously costing me something? Okay, and right now, that's exactly the problem. That's why transit and transportation sucks. I mean, traveling sucks, right? Who really likes traveling? It used to be that it's an experience, but it's not anymore. So we are committed to make it suck less, basically. That's our goal. And um, we're not thinking to do this alone. So we need you guys, right? We need um, really bright minds that are working on huge problems to help us. And uh, you know, we want to help all the different companies that are working in these areas to basically get together and solve all those issues we're having with transportation. Because again, San Francisco, LA, yeah, it kind of sucks. But if you have been ever in Beijing, that's really bad. And so they don't have time. If you have a solution, they'll implement it tomorrow. India, you know, they're ready. They're building satellite cities. Imagine living in a great, like 100 miles away in a great city that's newly built with a front yard, and within 10 minutes, you're in San Francisco. Because that's the solution we're building.